Before we start this video, a large thank you to the gentlemen listed below for their support on Patreon. I wish I knew how to pronounce your name, but nonetheless, man, thank you for your support. I hope you enjoy the video. Hello guys, we're going to jump right into it now. So today we have a Patreon request. So you'll notice now if I attack over and over again with my character, as you can see, I'm actually not stopping my attack if my stamina has reached zero. The same is true for backstepping, rolling, and sprinting. Uh, so basically, we're able to do all these actions when our stamina is at zero, and we don't want that. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to place restrictions on all of our actions depending on our stamina. So here on the handle roll input, I could put a check here to see if uh, we have no stamina, we're not going to hit the B input. But we're going to use the B input for other stuff in the future, like menus and such. So I'm not going to put it here. I'm actually going to go over to the player locomotion, and we're going to implement our checks actually on the functions where we do the actions. So right here where it says handle, roll, and sprint, uh, or handle, roll, and sprinting, we're going to say, let's check if we have stamina, and if we do not, we're just going to return the code. So in order to do that, we have to check for our player stats, and it looks like we don't have it up here, so let's put it right under the player manager. It's going to say player stats, and then down below that on awake, I'm actually going to take all of the uh, scripts here in the start menu, so everything that I call upon as a script, I'm going to copy it and put it in the awake. Just make it look consistent. So uh, right below the player manager, I'm going to say player stats is equal to get component. And we're going to say player stats. Now essentially we're just going to check the remaining stamina on the player stats script. Now on the player stats we can say if player stats dot current stamina is less than or equal to zero return whoops that's supposed to be less than or equal to not equal or less than there we go now you can copy this function because we're going to put that a couple places here on the uh, the player locomotion script so on the jumping we're gonna do the same thing we don't want to be able to jump if we do not have stamina so we're gonna put that check there and if we have zero stamina we're not going to jump Okay, looks good. So, over here on the player attacker next, we're going to do the exact same thing. So, under the handle light attack, I'm just going to put this right on the first entry of the function. So, right above everything, we're going to do that stamina check. And we're going to do the same thing on our handle weapon combo and our handle heavy attack. So, just copy that, like so again right above here in the top line of handle weapon combo paste that in there and down here on handle heavy attack we will do the same thing okay looks good and also on attempt backstab repose you don't need to put it on perform uh, melee actions because we're doing the check before that but here on attempt backstab or repose you don't want to be able to backstab or post if you have no stamina so right on the top entry of the code and that will be our check okay that looks great so far now, let's go in the game here and test that out. So if I swing and I swing, it's going to get it to zero here. Yeah, okay, we're good. We can't swing at zero stamina, and then it goes back up, and then we can swing. All right, excellent. But you'll notice we can still roll and backstep. This is actually because the rolling and backstepping has no stamina cost right now. Uh, so we're not actually able to roll and backstep when we have zero stamina. It just looks that way. So let's actually implement a stamina and roll uh, cost for, for every time we roll and backstep. So right here on the player locomotion, I'm just going to say header and we're going to say roll costs and down here I'm just going to say serialize field and I'm going to say float I'm just going to call this alright, let's call it roll stamina cost and I'm going to initialize that at 15. I'm going to make another float. I'm going to call this backstep stamina cost. I'm going to initialize that at, say, 12. You guys can use public here instead of serialized field. Uh, I just use serialized field because I appear to have done it before. I typically use public on my own personal projects. I know you're not supposed to. It is just a force of habit. It's one that I should break. You should be using serialized field if you want to edit these values in the inspector and you're not calling them anywhere else. So, down here where it says if input handler.movement is greater than zero, you can see we're rolling. We're going to say player stats 
dot take stamina damage, and we're going to deduct the rolling stamina cost. And oh, that's actually going to require uh, an int, I believe. So let's see. Yes, it is. So I'm going to change that to an int, and I'm going to change this one to an int as well. Since they're whole numbers, it's not like it really matters anyway. All right, so let's go back down here, and we're going to do the same thing in similar fashion. We're just going to copy this, and right where it says uh, else, if we're not moving forward, we're backstepping. Uh, I'm just going to change that to backstep stamina cost. And now we have proper stamina deduction for our backsteps and our rolls. Okay, so if I go in game here now, and I drain out my stamina with my attack, and I try to roll, I cannot. Oh, I got some weird stuttering, though. That looks like our player is actually trying to sprint when we're hitting the B. Yeah, I think that's what's happening. See that? That little stutter. So we're actually going to change how we can or configure our B controls, because right now, with the layout that we have, it kind of looks a bit uh, clunky. And I actually reworked this. Uh, this is a problem here, which is print flag equals B input. Um, we're going to change this. I reworked this in my personal project a while ago, and it looks a lot smoother and nicer. Uh, performs exactly as it should. So uh, we're going to delete this, and we're going to change this function. This is, again, on the handle roll input and our input handler, by the way. Uh, right here where it says if B input, we're going to say if player stats. It looks like we don't have the player stats called. So let's call the player stats right here below the player manager. I'm just going to say player stats, player stats, and... Let's call that on the awake method. Again, right below the player manager, we're going to say player stats equals get component player stats. Okay, now we're going to do a couple of things with the B uh, input. First, let's say if player stats dot current stamina, again, is less than or equal to zero, and we want to do some logic. And we're going to say sprint flag is equal to false. So if you're out of stamina, your sprint flag is false. And we're going to say your B input is false. And uh, you're going to be saying, well, why? We're going to delete this right here first, and I'll show you why. So on enable, we're going to do two things. Right now, we're using uh, input actions dot action dot performed. We're going to say input actions dot player actions dot, uh, I think it's called role actually, dot cancelled so basically this works the same way as perform but when you cancel the button so I think it's when you hit the button and let go of it uh, that's when the action is called we're gonna say B input equals false and then right above that we're gonna do the same thing uh, that we usually do and we're gonna say input actions dot roll dot perform B input equals true so uh, I believe the way this works is that when you press the button, it changes the input to true. I know that for a fact. But I think when you unpress the button, so when you let go of it, uh, it activates as a cancel event, and then it changes the bool to false, which is what we have right below it. So right here. So yes, I haven't checked the documentation. I know it works, but I believe when you do let go of the button, that does trigger the canceled event, much like when you press it, it triggers the performed event. So let's go down here now on the B input, and we're going to say if move amount is greater than 0 0.5 f and player stats dot current stamina is greater than zero then we're going to say sprint flag equals true then down here on the else let's just take that and put it up here and let's save it okay let's make a way to deduct stamina when we sprint and then we're good first let's go over here to our player locomotion let's actually make a roll co or a sprint cost sorry and I'm just going to change the name of this to stamina costs and I'm going to make an int I'm going to call it sprint stamina cost I'm going to initialize it as say one and right now you can see right here this is where we're sprinting it says if input handler dot sprint flag and our movement is greater than 0 0.5 then we are sprinting so right on the bottom here, we're going to say player stats dot take stamina damage, and we're just going to say sprint cost. And we are good to go. So let's save that. Let's drop into the game here. Now, if I run around and sprint, as you can see, my stamina is depleting. And when I run into stamina, I stop sprinting. Perfect. And if I 
run around here again, sprinting. And then right when I run out of stamina, I stop sprinting. Excellent. Works just as intended. So I can roll, and now I can't roll. And then I can roll, and now I can't roll. And then I sprint, and I stop sprinting. All right, guys. Now we have a system that deducts stamina when we roll, backstep, and sprint, and a system that stops us from attacking, sprinting, rolling, or backstepping if our stamina has been depleted. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I said I was going to do a housekeeping video uh, this time around, but this was a Patreon request and something I was supposed to do a couple of videos ago, but it had slipped my mind. So the housekeeping video is coming up real soon. And also, uh, in the very near future, probably in about two or three videos' time, we're going to be covering parrying and reposting. So if you got this far and you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment. It helps appease the YouTube algorithm gods. It helps my series get around. It does something to the algorithm to help my channel. And if you're feeling super generous, check out my Patreon below. I will see you guys in the next one.